Hey everyone, this is Tommy Black and welcome to Five or More Questions, episode number 35. On this show, I talk with artists about their current projects and stories they've never told before. Today we're talking to Larry Blackman from Cameo. Larry Blackman also co-produced Eddie Murphy's album, Shaka Khan, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Bobby Brown, and many more. So let's give him a call. She's double stacked. When she walked past, she gave the whole room whiplash. Cause she turned them heads too fast. They couldn't tell what hit him. Cause that girl walked by with the rhythm. She had walked with the runway swag. Out his shoes in the bourbon. All right. Hey, Larry, how you doing? I'm great, Tommy. How are you? Good, good. I'm stoked to talk to you. Um, where, where, are you, where are you at right now, Larry? I'm in Vegas. In Vegas. Do you live in Vegas right now, or are you just... You yes, I do. Yes, I do. I live, I've been here five years. Oh, nice. Nice. Where, well, where are you from originally? I'm from New York. Cool. I'm from New York originally, and, uh, and I spent maybe from 80, from 1980 to, God, off and on for a while in Atlanta. Uh huh. And uh, and then uh, and then I moved here. Oh, cool. And it's uh, iconic. After I moved here, we we did a uh, a stint at uh, at the Westgate for a year. Mm hmm. Cool. Yeah. So, but I like it in Vegas. You know, I think it's it's conducive to, you know, to showbiz people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's it, and it's like New York, man. It's always open. <laughs> yeah. It's it's always going on. Um, yeah, absolutely. Where did Cameo start? And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, 1974? Oh, no, 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 that, that early. 70, we, we, we got our deal in 77. Okay. Like, actually, 76. We got our deal. It was a single deal with Casablanca Records. Nice. And uh, it was a disco song um, written by a guy... Uh, uh, in New York, um, and I produced it uh, for him, actually, well, actually for the group, but uh, uh, Neil Bogart was crazy about it, and uh, and it didn't do too well. I mean, you know, he was crazy about it, but toward the end of that deal, we asked uh, for them to send someone to New York to listen to our original material. Uh-huh. And uh, and they listened, you know, we did it at a rehearsal hall, and, uh, you know, they, they were crazy about it. And fortunately, it did very well. Wow. You know, it was, and that was an album deal. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Rigor Mortis was the first single, and, uh, and the album was Cardiac Arrest. Wow. And, yeah. uh, and it's been gold and platinum since then. And history was made. <laughs> were you? Yeah, right. You were on Casablanca, so were you like label mates with Kiss or something like that at that time? Wasn't Kiss? Abso absolutely. And ironically, I uh, we had a relationship before Kiss. Uh, they were in, they had the New York Dolls look at the time, uh, wow. and we rehearsed. We rehearsed at a place on Twenty uh, Third Street that they would rehearse at night, and we were rehearsing in the morning. Uh -huh. uh, so, so they used to leave pictures for me on the on the board. It was a you know a demo studio, uh -huh. and uh, we rehearsed there. And I'd come in that next morning to some wild pictures left on the board for me with Jeannie. Those guys, man, they were they were crazy guys. <laughs> 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 and uh, and we wound up on the same label. Wow! Did you guys ever share a gig or anything like that, or? No, just unfortunately, no. You yeah, know, different it was genres. Just, I, yeah, different genres, totally. You yeah. know what I mean? But yeah, uh, but they were always always cool guys, man. I mean, you know, I I ran into Gene uh, uh -huh. in L.A. some years ago, and uh, man, we always talk about those days in New York. Uh, yeah, man, they're great guys. It, you know, it's just so ironic. You know, uh, it's a small world in the music business, though. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And the thing is that you both are still, you know, around your longevity for both bands in that same rehearsal studio. <laughs> yeah, how about that? I mean, it, that's the first thing he brought up. 
How about those pictures I used to leave, Larry? <laughs> <laughs> It was wild, man. It was really wild. Oh, that's cool. Um, I mean, it, it's what, I mean, like, word up. It's a timeless, timeless sound. What do you think uh, helps that? I mean, what what makes that uh, timeless? What, what what gives longevity like that, do you think? What's the secret? It, you know, it, we have a lot of songs that, that ha- have that kind of uh, longevity, man. It's, it's a timeless sound, you know, when you can... You know, you can just hit on that thing that matters and, and, and happens, you know what I mean? And Word Up was such a fluke. Um, you know, like, like most of our songs, I mean, you know, when you when you check out the history of the act, you know what I mean? Uh, there's songs that, you know, people are still playing right. that for me, and, and every time I hear it, I get a rush, you know what I mean? So I know, you know, we tried to, we tried to be radio friendly. Right. That, that was... That was the key. When it came to producing songs, you know, you want to be radio friendly. So the company used to tell us, well, they're doing ballads now, and we used to do up-tempo stuff. You know, we did what we thought the streets wanted, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, and Word Up just just hit that thing, as well as Candy and some others, you know, right, Single right. Life. You know, we wanted to talk about the lifestyle, you know, of the urban dweller at that time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, to us, it was about the beat. It was about the feeling. And we talked about something that I think related to everyday life, you know, with the urban cat. You know what I mean? And it wasn't about, you know, what kind of music you did as much as if it hit, it hit. Yeah. That's when that's when pop became how many uh, copies you sold. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was a great thing, you know, for us. What about, I mean, could you tell me a little bit about the ri- your preferred writing process, or is there a, per- I mean... Yeah, well, you know, what what I like to do is, is first, you know, I try to, to imagine, you know, the character uh, of the individual. You know, we'll have a track, okay, that we like, and then we'll hold on to that track until we see we have something to go with it that really, really works, mm-hmm. you know? And and there's no set pattern mm-hmm. for, you know, every song. I mean, you know, you could be doing something stupid in your kitchen or, or, or you know, and, and, or fooling around on your act and, and come up with, you know, something you think will work and something that you haven't heard before, okay? And the real change was, you know, when it moved from, you know, old school sounds mm. and then, it, you know, and companies started creating a way for a guy to create songs in his home without a big band. Yeah. Okay. So what that brought about with certain instruments, with sounds that you were just anxious to get at because we were, we were in this thing right before the revolution of sounds came along. Right. Okay. And the whole digital recording thing just blew me away. I mean, I had a Mitsubishi XA50 that I used to, like, I traveled, it traveled with me, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, it was expensive, but that's okay, because at least there's just something about that digital tape that makes silence part of the music, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. So... You know, I was able to do things that I was nev- never able to do before when it came to sounds, okay? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, then, and then Lindrum had his revolution, okay? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you catch, like, you know, George Massenberg and, and, and other people were doing things, and Maurice White, you know, uh, turned me on to a lot of different things. He was, he was a mentor at, at one time, you know, any time they played in the region, I used to go by and uh, and sit with him and talk with him. Uh, Larry Dunn, the keyboard player for Earth, when Fire, told me the other day that uh, he remembers when I used to come by the hotel there in Atlanta at the Omni and, uh, and you know, talk with Maurice at 2 or 3 in the morning, you know what I mean? Just pick his uh, brain. Pick his brain. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, but, you know, uh, they, they, they created what I had imagined, having your own autonomy in the same band, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, you know, you, you had something to follow, 
And you get advice from people like that, man, because you never, you've never had the experience that they were having at the time, okay? Yeah. And, uh, and you had to learn, you know? Uh-huh. That's why I'm bothering you with these questions. <laughs> That's quite all right. That's quite all right. Um, That's quite all right. But I heard your um, snare drum sound was actually a hand clap. Um, that's actually, that's true. That's true. And uh, I guess it got around. <laughs> yeah. So you you would invent yeah. you would invent sounds. I mean, you wouldn't have to use. Yeah. You weren't. And and this was before. I mean, sounds have evolved electronically. You know, a lot. The the instruments, but your your sounds all still hold up you know what i mean your choices you know what yes, i mean yes, yes and and uh you know i was foolish enough to leave our tape at a studio in, in los angeles i guess after we finished the session that night they uh they got on it and and uh you know caught some sounds but that's all right you know that happens in the business you know what i mean uh i was talking to miles davis about that uh before he passed of course and wow. and uh and he said you know larry unless you're born in a cubicle and you never hear anything until you're an adult, you know, what, what's original? And I could dig that. But when I created that sound, you know, I took six guys and put them on a staircase and, uh, at Quadrasonic Sound in New York, and we helped put them on a mat with, with the uh, success we had. But they had a cement staircase, fire escape, mm -hmm. and I, 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 I just took the mics, I took two mics, and put one on one level and one on another, and I took the guys and we did hand claps, you know what I'm saying, on that staircase, mm -hmm. and then we uh, used the Dim D, uh, you know, and 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 processed it, mm -hmm. and it just came up with the sound that I'd never heard before. That was just hard hitting for me. Perfect. And of course, we processed the uh, kick as well, you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. you couldn't find those sounds anywhere exactly the way I created them. And uh, it paid off, man. I mean, you know, because sounds inspire all of us. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, no matter what you're listening to, it, you know, and and you can never predict what that is. So, you know, that moved our creative process along perfectly with what was happening on the, on the digital realm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, you know, and, and I'll do that every time I can imagine something that I haven't heard before. Yeah, that's cool. A sound can make you have a memory or smell something or or feel something. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So you, just like colors, you yeah, know. Yeah. Can you tell me a, a little about your relationship with Miles Davis? Oh man, Miles was like a second daddy to me when I was a kid. Uh, you know, my father uh, was into the boxing game, and uh, I guess I was about nine. Nine or ten when I first met Miles, he, he used to work out at a gym <laughs> there uh, at Harry Wiley's gym, and uh, I used to see this funny-looking car, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the Ferrari he drove, and uh, he seemed like a strange guy to me. Well, that was then, and then of course I'm in the music business later, and uh, I created a uh, a demo I thought would be great for him. And his, uh, his attorney was uh, an attorney we used to use occasionally, Peter Shukat, you know. He's no longer with us, but I asked Peter to send it to Miles to see if he was interested. And, off, off the, you know, right off the jump, he was crazy about it, you know. And uh, Miles was, you know, Miles was a strange guy, man. I loved him, though, you know. <laughs> it was, it was his, his personality was so different. You know, and he just had a, an energy to, to him that was just different than anyone else I ever met, you know. Uh -huh. So aside from working with him, you know, I used to call him when I was uh, in L.A. And uh, his place in Malibu, Malibu, I used to go over and we used to talk and play around. I mean, Miles was, man, I was so sad when he passed. You know, mm -hmm. I had no idea he was ill, you know, but... Mm -hmm. uh he was he was really an icon, man. Yeah. Beyond what beyond what you know, normal people would know about. I mean, he was really uh, and he had a fresh ear. You know, mm -hmm. he really did. Mm -hmm. When you say fresh ear, you mean always hearing things freshly, like yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, new. Uh, he, I mean, 
Yeah, he, he, you know, he was always searching for the 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 new and different. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And and mm -hmm. he, he had he had close relationships with a lot of young cats. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, guys playing Marcus Miller and some of the other people. Great. You know, I, you I, know. I think Miles well, used to hate to be bored. He was always learning things. You're saying, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S well, again, you're. Your, your ideas of recording led you, I I would say, to producing a lot of people also, correct? Oh, indeed, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. and I see uh, I see Red Hot Chili Peppers, Shaka Khan, um, and many others. Um, um, Eddie Murphy, even. Um, oh yeah, oh yeah. What was it? <laughs> what was it like working with Eddie Murphy? I was I was quite shocked at the the uh, range of talent Eddie had. You know. It was nothing to walk into the studio and you'd hear someone on the piano and sounding like uh, Elvis Presley, someone. Wow. And, uh, you know, it was Eddie. Eddie had a, uh, a talent for, you know, impressions. Um, and I, I think, you know, he, he had a strong ear about what he wanted to hear. However, you know, I think sometimes with Cats, man, you know, when it comes to producing songs, you know, my question is, what are you trying to achieve? And once I get an idea of what they're trying to do, I try to crystallize that to make it, you know, um, I don't want to say palatable for the genre they're trying to appeal to. Mm. Okay? You want to dress, and it, dress what, it appropriately. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think a producer's job is to interpret what the artist is trying to do, mm -hmm. you should be able to, and you know, you should be able to understand what he's trying to do and shape it that way instead of giving him something to do that, you know, he's not in touch with. Right. Uh, I don't, th I don't think that works. You know, I don't believe in, in, uh, the production style to give someone a hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? You, you, because they, they have to live with it, you know? They have to live with it after it's done. So I try to you really touch, you know, interpret what they are trying to do. Mm. You know, I think you have more 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 life in that concept. You know, rather than you know finding a hit and doing it on someone because they're an artist. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, and developing what's in them and making it right. palatable to to others. <laughs> It, it, it's so much easier interpreting, you know, rather than to imagine for that artist. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Um, so with Eddie, I mean, what, was did Charlie Murphy hang out too, ever when you were recording? Uh, you know, occasionally everyone stopped by, you know, and uh, Arsenio used to stop by also. As a matter of fact, I produced Arsenio's uh, video, uh, oh, cool. Chucky A. Oh, cool. It's Chunky AP, yeah, and uh, that was fun, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, with Eddie and and, uh, and with Will Smith also, that was a, a good project. Wow. I love work. I mean, they, these guys were serious about what they were trying to do. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I mentioned to Eddie recently, I said, so when are you going to go back in the studio? He said, man, America wants me to make them laugh, Larry. They don't want to hear me sing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm with that. <laughs> but that's so. the thing. When you can do voices, it seems like people that can do different voices also have an extremely good voice. I mean, they, they can do voiceover, they can do whatever, and they can sing, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean... You know, it's, it's, it's funny, but, but Eddie felt what he was doing, which yeah. was great. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'd have, you know, I, it was hard to follow what, you know, what he wanted. And, um, but he felt what he was doing and, uh, and it was sincere. You know, he gave it a serious effort. It wasn't as if just because he was Eddie Murphy, mm -hmm. you know, he just did anything, you know, uh, and it was fun working with them also. Mm -hmm. Cool. Did, uh, I mean, that had to be, yeah, as you said, everybody dropped by. And everybody dropped by recording sessions in those days, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the way, part of the process. Um, more than, more than these days, it seems like. Did Rick James ever drop by? 
Well, you, Rick was the one who introduced me to Eddie. Oh, how'd that happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he told, me, he told me that Eddie wanted to meet me. We were in uh, Hollywood at uh, Chateau Marmont. And uh, he said Eddie's going to be across the street there at Carlos and Charlie's later. And he wanted to meet you. You know, and I said, cool. And, uh, you know, we did that. Wow. Next thing I know, I'm getting a call uh, about, you know, Eddie wanting to uh, do some songs. So cool. So cool. Tell me about uh, your new single, uh, El Paso. I heard, I heard it's amazing. It's, it's, tell me yeah, about man. it. Yeah, man. It's a cool song. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, you know I, I like experimenting with, uh, you know, avant-garde beats, too. And, you know, it's funny. There's, you know, in, in hip-hop, there was this beat that, man, I started playing 20 years ago, and I would never use it because... It, you know, it wouldn't have been accepted then as, <laughs> you know, as, uh, it, and things evolved, man. And, and the more this evolved, yeah. okay, yeah. Uh, like I said, you create, you're inspired by, by beats and different things. And, uh, you know, so El Paso was a song that, uh, that I came up with that was really, and it was inspiring. And every, Every time it's played, you know, we get a good response from it. Yeah. So you know, we're going for the national release, and uh, I think it's going to do well. Yeah. It's a great song. I think it's going to do real well. Yeah, thank you. I'm yeah. glad you liked it. Yeah. And that video of you, you there's a video of you saying thanking everybody for downloading it. It's was, it was just cool. It's cool. You're, you're, the way, there's a reason you've been around so long as you have or you're forever yeah <laughs> forever yeah yeah well how but it's fun. how and again um again rick james introducing you to to eddie murphy i mean you were in that scene there's some some heavy stuff going on in those scenes and you you've been productive and still around and still healthy and didn't get in any dark places it appears which is says a lot for you your professionalism you know? you know what? The music business is a strange business, man. You know, uh, you know, a lot of things go on over the years, you know, and, and, you know, some people pass through those places like small cities and move on to the big city. And some people get stuck there, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, and I just thank the universe that, you know, I didn't get stuck there. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, because living is, is the real trip. <laughs> totally. It's, it's easy to leave. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a little, it's a little harder staying, but but I enjoy I enjoy the the uh, I don't want to say the um, the uh, I don't, don't want to call it um, the variety of discovery. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And 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 for me. You know, you, you look for certain feelings and a certain energy and, you know, you discover you can find that same thing every day. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm not going to say that what I've been through has not added to the, uh, to the encyclopedia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, experiences. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? But thank God that... Uh, you know, music has been my uh, my habit, you know, and, and I love it. You know, I just love it so much. And and I'm going to do, I'm, I'm planning to do some world music that I'm very excited about, you know what I mean? Very cool. Uh, you know, as, as you move on, I mean, because, I mean, you hear some things and you know when it hits you. And, and you know when, you, when, you, when you've been had, you know, mm -hmm. and there's some music that I haven't done that I'm really anxious to do and do it at, you know, on a pace that, you know, on my time, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not, not ne necessarily, you know, trying to run in the rat race. Yeah. You know? and, and it's sincere and man, I mean, and that's a good thing. Yeah. That's, and that re goes back to your, Miles Davis fresh ears thing. You're always learning and you're 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 always learning, you know? 
That's yeah, cool. absolutely. That's I mean, then you know, you listen to different types of music from different places, and you'll find things that you didn't think existed. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it's, it's, it's that thing that, that grabs you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I wish I could, I could, uh, I had a formula for that, but there is no formula for that. No. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. Nope. There isn't. <laughs> That's cool. That's great. And that kind of answers my next question. What What are your future plans for Cameo? More music, man. More music. More you know, music. and 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 to to carve out what what identifies me as a producer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm I'm really I'm anxious to to move along those lines. Um, but you know we have so much talent in this uh, operation that you know I have so many choices. You know which where to go and what to do, and uh, and you, you're trying to feel. You know what? You know what the public, what, what they're moving toward. Also, there was a, a time for a minute here where um, this uh, electronic thing, you know, had become you know a bit, you know, boring. Okay, mm-hmm. and that's never been my cup of tea. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so as long as there, as long as we have integrity in the music we do. Okay, uh, we're going to do what is funky for us. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And 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 uh, that should be. That, I mean, because El Paso is a result of that same philosophy. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so that's what we're going to do, man. We're going to do as long as we can do it. We're going to do it. Mm. And and you guys are playing. You're on. You're going to be playing in in Canada, I think, tomorrow, right? Actually, Ontario, California. Oh, sorry. Ontario. I'm thinking Canada. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> Ontario, California. Got it. Okay. And how often do you tour these days? I mean, do you tour a lot or do you do fly out a lot? You know, what, what, what we do is we do, we, we stop doing the tour and record tour, record tour, tour thing. And so we decided to work the around. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and that for us. You know, and then that keeps your juices flowing as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, you know, some people have ideas on what they think is 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 hip and not hip. But people who want to hear cameo, you know, we're going to be available. Yeah. You know, for that thing, and and you know, and then do what makes sense to do, as we used to in the very beginning. You know, before it was. Album tour, album tour deal. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know that doesn't always work that way. Yeah. But we find that you know there's always an audience that wants to hear what we do, mm-hmm. and that's a wonderful thing. Very cool. Very cool. And you're there for them. That's right. What do you think of when you when you think of the Viper Room? I think of uh, progressive, you know, rock music. You know what I mean? I haven't. I've never been to a performance at the Viper Room, but I've always been curious. Uh, and what I've read, I, I like what I read, you know, catch jam, catch do other things, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I'd always, I had always planned to, to stop by, and now after I've talked to you, I'm going to make it a point of doing it. Nice. <laughs> well, I'll be there. I'll be there. You know, every club has a, a nostalgic venue, whether it's like First Avenue or... You know, yes. Max's or, you know, and and that's, you know, kind of the vibe there. You, you got to right. go. What, what's been happening lately? For example, just during the day the other day, it was one of the Foo Fighters and um, Taylor oh, Hawkins cool. and, and then uh, Perry Farrell from Jane's Addiction, like, did a thing during the day there. And there's just always, I mean, it's all genres. That's just recently. But there's always something going on. You, you'd love it. Oh, a lot of new, um, cool things at all. You know, just different things always. But it's a good, I think it'd be an interesting experience for you. you yeah, know? it's some place to go at least, you know. <laughs> yeah, got to have a place to go. Tell me about um, CameoNation.com. Man, it, it, we've had a lot of fun with that, you know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've been having a lot of fun with it as well, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I think, 
social media these days, how can you live without it? You know? Right. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm happy to have a place that people can go and find out what we're doing, what, you know, and, and, you know, interesting things that they might not be aware of, you know what I mean? Merchandise, the, the other things we do. Um, and, and we started just recently doing a, you know, Ask LB thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and, and occasionally I try to stay as current as I can to answer questions that, you know, people are, are, are concerned about or, uh, you know, want to know what we're up to or what have you. It's nice to have that connection. Mm-hmm. It, you know, it makes a difference. Yeah. You know, whereas before it, it was, uh, you know, you know, what, <laughs> you know, what you could afford with your publicity people now. You have the freedom to do what you want, when you want, how you want. You yeah, know? yeah. You were removed so, before, yeah, and now, now it's all out there. If you want it to be, you know. Absolutely. Cool. Well, well, Larry, thank you so much for for talking to me. I, I appreciate it. Absolutely, Tommy. Absolutely, and I'll stop by there soon, man. Yeah, when you're in town, you got to come by the Viper. Room. <laughs> I sure, sure will. I sure will. All right. Well, well, take care of yourself and thank you. All right, Tommy. Thank you. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you for your time, Larry. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe to Five or More Questions with Tommy Black on your favorite podcast app and visit ViperRoom.com for upcoming shows. Wow, this new Music One headphones sound really great.